Hello, TikTok. It's me. Um, gather your milk and cookies because I've decided that it's story time. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be reading another chapter of Jerry and the Goddesses as that takes forever uh, to put together. But this is one that I feel like I could quickly record and uh, do a little post-processing to and get it ready for you all in a single evening. Here we go. This is a story I wrote some time back called A Study in Anachronisms. Instructions not followed. Instructions require command authorization and safety protocol overrides. Please consult documentation for more information. The response from the relic took me by surprise. I had never heard it speak before, and though the words were said in the common tongue, their meaning eluded me. As the shouts from the last defenders at the curtain wall washed over me, I cast about anxiously for some clue. Documentation, it had said. Wasn't that another word for writing? My mind settled upon the sacred text of Avtar. It was rumored to be connected to the relic in some way. I hurried to the shrine of the ancients and quickly located the text and its reliquary. With no time to open the container properly, I drew my sword and used the blade to lever open the lid. The air inside rushed out, bringing with it the surprising smell of rain. It was not how I expected 5,000-year-old air to smell. I had expected the odor of dust, of ancient parchments. Tossing such thoughts aside, I retrieved the sacred text. The color cover was made of some strange metal, pliable as fresh beech bark, but smooth as a polished mirror. The words emblazoned upon the cover were written in a hand alien to my modern eyes and worn by centuries of use before its consignment to the shrine. But the shapes of the letters were partially recognizable, even as the words they spelled assaulted my mind with confusion. Avtar. Operation Gabriel. I quickly opened the tome and began reading. The writing inside was of the same hand, but far less worn and easier to read, if no less difficult to understand. Words I had never heard or seen written before flowed past my eyes, a number punctuating each line. The numbers seemed to increase, but not by any pattern I could discern. Halfway through the second page, a line caught my eye. Command Authorization Procedure, 87. I stared for a moment. Was this the answer I sought? Even here in the shrine, the roars of the demons, the cries of the defenders, and most disturbingly, the screams of the fallen penetrated, edging me on to move faster before all was lost. Eventually I noticed a number at the bottom of the page. Two. I flipped back and checked the same spot to find a one. Excited, I flipped forward and checked the next page. Three. Did these numbers indicate the order of the pages? It seemed silly as the tome was bound and the leafs could not be taken out of order without destroying it, but the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. I flipped several pages forward and was rewarded with a dense block of text and what appeared to be a drawing of the relic. I was right. The first few pages were a list of topics, with the pages on which each topic could be found listed. I quickly thumbed forward to, pay to the page with an 87 at the bottom. I read quickly but carefully. It instructed me to place my thumb upon one of the jewels and state my name and rank which I took to mean my titles, slowly and clearly, followed by the words, Initiate Command Authorization. I clasped the relic to my chest, thumb pressed to the flat black jewel, and spoke. I am Tratus of House Elamir, second of his name, King of the New Florian people, and Lord Commander of the Colonial Marns. Initiate Command Authorization. Command Authorization accepted. The voice from the relic was strangely calm almost inhuman. I intoned the sacred prayer of last resort again. Orbital strike on my location. Instructions not followed. Instructions require safety protocol overrides. Strategic assistance systems advise, advise, advise deployment of automated quick reaction force. Analysis. Automated quick reaction force is currently at 57% strength with all casualties attributed to maintenance fa 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 failures. Strategic assessment of military engagement at command site indicates 25% of opera operational automated quick reaction force would be sufficient to repel enemy forces, and 40% of operational automated quick reaction forces would be sufficient to destroy remaining enemy positions within 1,000 kilometers of command site. Would you like to deploy the automated quick reaction force? I, uh, I took a moment to process the words. What 
force was it referring to? And how could a force experience casualties like an army? As I processed the words, one thing became clear. The relic was telling me that it was able to destroy all of the demons within a thousand kill omi tears, whatever that was, a unit of distance, I presumed. Yes, I stated, more than a hint of desperation in my voice. Yes, deploy the otter, the force. What, what, what proportion of automated quick reaction force should be deployed? I didn't need to think this one through. All of it, I replied, everything you can. I was still too afraid for hope, but the weight of our impending doom seemed a bit lesser in that moment. The prayer for orbital strike was prophesied to destroy not just the enemy, but the city and the castle as well. This otter-mated quick reaction force made no mention of destroying the city and required fewer prayers to invoke. Would we perhaps survive after all? Automated quick reaction force deployed. All satellites report successful launch. ETA 3 minutes 15 seconds. I strode back to the throne room and grabbed the sand glass, flipping it over. It would take five minutes to run out, so this force should have struck the enemy by then. Confusion and hope waged a war for my heart as I immediately forgot about the sand glass and made my way out to the wall, sword still in hand. I had not fought with it since my last fencing lesson, lesson at age 19, but I remembered my lessons well. I was determined to help rally what men remained to me. I climbed the stairs to the wall above the gate, a trail of squires in battle-worn armor and nobles wearing coats in a much finer state of repair coalescing in my wake. At my top, at the top, I found Sir Garriman, my steward and the commander of this, the last garrison. My lord, he greeted me. I could see the defeat in his eyes, but his tone was the same gruff, business-like manner I had always known. Have you made the prayer? I shook my head. No. I tried to, but the relic spoke to me. It told me of another way. With any luck, we may yet survive this nightmare. I looked out over the parapets to the throngs of demons below. Like a cross between men and giant spiders, they scuttled about and threw themselves at the walls, heedless of the arrows which skipped off their armored backs and even the crossbow bolts that turned them into pincushions. They let loose a steady stream of inhuman shrieks as they scrambled up the walls. The hot oil at least seemed to be effective. I watched two men tip a cauldron over the crenellations and saw the demons below hurling themselves aside, writhing in agony. Those who caught the full force of the stream seemed to pop, briefly tensing up before liquid spurted out of the joints in their armor, and then they collapsed. The rocks worked as well, knocking demons down and occasionally crushing them. But we were quickly running out of both rocks and oil, and it seemed likely the battle would soon become a melee as the demons summited the curtain wall. Those few who made it that far were quickly cut down with blades and axes, but I had seen more than one body in the courtyard with the telltale bloating caused by these creatures' venomous bites. My lord! I looked up at Sir Garriman at his shout, only to see him with his neck craned back, eyes to the heavens. I followed his gaze up. There were stars in the sky in the middle of the day. I could see them silhouetted by the clouds, sparkling and growing. The automated quick reaction force, I muttered under my breath. As the stars grew, they resolved into shapes. Each was like an ornate egg with flames spouting from the bottom. Not flames like from a torch, either. These flames burned with an intense blue light, like the flames of a smelter, only brighter and less chaotic. I'd heard rumors of a faraway land where the otters had bills like ducks and laid eggs, but these seemed far too large for that. I wondered if, as the demons as the demons were a hybrid of man and spider, the eggs contained warriors who would be hybrids of man and otter. In just a few moments, the eggs grew to enormous size. The largest was bigger than a cottage, though these were outnumbered by various sizes of smaller eggs, most of them being slightly larger than a man. I watched as the eggs descended. As they reached a point just above the tallest tower of the castle, the flames flared brighter and much smaller flames spouted from around the edges of the eggs. They slowed considerably and descended almost gently to the ground throughout the town and even inside the keep. They slammed down with hollow thuds that echoed through the walls of the keep. I spun to observe a dozen man-sized eggs as they set down, the flames lighting the straw strewn them through the courtyard briefly, before huge plumes of smoke erupted and extinguished them. 
As the smoke cleared, I could see that one edge of the eggs had opened like a yawning mouth. From these portals strode what looked like men in heavy, ornate armor. Black on black, their plates displayed no devices but a series of yellow numbers and letters across the chest and back. They held ornate clubs with odd right-angled handles. One of the men, the one with CMDR-01A2 emblazoned on his chest, turned his head to look around, stopping when he faced me. As he approached the stairs, I heard a cacophony behind me. I looked back over the walls and beheld an almost inscrutable sight. Hundreds of the armored men were attacking the demons, backed by huge beasts that looked like giant clawless crabs with masts of ships protruding from their backs. But the way they fought was amazing. They did not wield their clubs as I expected, but cradled them in their arms, pointing the end opposite the strange handles at the demons. From this end emanated staccato bright flashes, each flash accompanied by a loud crack like a thick tree limb snapping. The giant crabs rotated their masts around in a similar manner, only the flash from their tip was almost blinding, and they made a great booming sound like lightning striking nearby. The demons were frantic. They redoubled their efforts to climb the walls, but to no avail. The armored men of this otter-mated quick-reaction force turned their clubs to those demons climbing the walls, and I watched in amazement as each crack and flash caused a demon to erupt gore from a spot on its body and the stone wall to shatter slightly behind it. My mouth was hanging open like a simpleton, but I did not feel self-conscious. Sir Garriman and every other warrior on the wall bore the same expression as I. We watched, stupefied, as the seemingly endless rank of demons began to thin. A stomping sound brought my attention back to my immediate surroundings, and I turned to see the armored man who'd spied me from the courtyard facing me. He spoke, his voice the same as the voice of the relic. Automated quick reaction force has been successfully deployed. Seventeen sentinels and one titan were lost, 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 lost to malfunctions in orbital deployment equipment. Communications with command personnel may now be done via radio or by directly addressing any automated quick reaction force unit. unit, unit. Expected time to destruct the destruction of local enemy forces is 12 minutes, 30 seconds. Automated repair facilities will touch down in 32 minutes, 45 seconds, and will be operational in 1 hour, 2 minutes, 12 seconds. Sh shipment of orbital and assault force casualties will begin in 57 minutes, 25 seconds. Automated quick reaction force expected to be at full strength in 2 days, 7 hours, 5 minutes, and 21 seconds. A planning session between command personnel and this unit is requested to confirm or, 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 or replace systems default deployment and strategy. I stared at the man before me as I processed the words. Much of his meaning eluded me, but I understood the important parts. In twelve minutes, the castle would be saved. In two days, the size of the army the relic had called forth would be almost double. Hope swelled within my breast. The End <laughs>